Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. Welcome once again to Oregon's new Labor Commissioner, Val Hoyle. It's good to have you here once again. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to revisit your speech that you gave when you were sworn in, and you talked about how you feel like your bureau's mission is even more important now, right. given the atmosphere at the federal level, and I'll read part of your speech. This is a time when the federal government is backtracking on civil rights for women, people of color, immigrants, and the LGBTQ community. People are scared. Now more than ever, the Bureau's purpose is magnified. Oregon has led the way on wages, sick time, worker scheduling, opportunities for the formerly incarcerated, and wage equality, as well as for civil rights protections at work and in housing. I'm proud to have been a part of passing many of those laws in the Oregon legislature, and I'm excited to lead the agency implementing and enforcing those laws. And some people may say that you, you should be focused just on Oregon, that you shouldn't be worried about what's happening at the federal level. How would you respond to that? Well, um, with the current Supreme Court makeup, uh, what we expect is that they will rule more in favor of states' rights as opposed to broader federal rights. So saying you as a state can do what you want to do, whether it's in terms of reproductive health or civil rights or whatnot. That is the expectation from legal scholars. Um, and when that happens, our statewide laws are more important. And so I take this mission very, very seriously. And um, I want to make sure that if people come to Oregon, they know that they cannot discriminate. They can't steal people's wages. They can't break the rules. And my, my job and my office is responsible for enforcing those laws. A couple of things. You talked about wage theft and also housing. I want to touch on those. Part of your mission statement says the mission of the Bureau of Labor and Industries is to protect employment rights, advance employment opportunities, and protect access to housing and public accommodations free from discrimination. So right. I want to talk about the housing part. Sure. An audit found, as well as undercover testing, that renters still face discrimination in the state. It showed Portland landlords gave worse treatment to immigrant and non-white renters about 25% of the time. Is that something you're office would look into? Right. It, our office um, is able to um, investigate and, um, and enforce uh, uh, penalties against those who engage in housing discrimination. So um, that is certainly something that we'll be pursuing. And the key thing that I want to do is to work to make sure that people know that bully exists. I always, I, I said during the campaign, that this is the most important job that nobody's ever heard of because they, they don't know what bully is, the Bureau of Labor and Industries. They don't know what they do and they don't know that they can come to us for these and things. And where is your office again so people so know? So the office is right over in the Lloyd District on Oregon Street and we have a website which we're going to improve so it will be more user friendly. We also have the second largest offices in Eugene um, over by Valley River Center. We have a small office in Salem, and then we have someone for apprenticeships that's in Medford and someone else in Bend. So if somebody has a housing complaint, they feel like they've been discriminated against right. as a renter, yeah. uh, feel like their wages have been uh, robbed right. from them, they can come to your office They directly? can either come to the office, or they can call us, or they can email us. Um, any of those things, we have a, a, a staff that is there ready. Now, but I will tell you that um, when Jack Roberts was here, so, so this was 24 years ago, there were 200 staff people at the Bureau of Labor and Industries. We now have 97 staff people. We have 25% higher population. We have more laws to, to enforce and investigate. So my people say, what, what is your major focus? My major focus is actually to get the resources so that we can do the job that Oregonians intend us to do. You have to, to get do. the legislature to pass something we to get more people? We do, and I've already been talking to people about that. And again, I've got support from both business and labor, because for businesses who are following the rules, they don't want to have to compete with someone that's not paying wages. That's not fair competition. So they, they're all about holding bad actors accountable. And again, having technical assistance that actually is available for businesses if they have questions. Apprenticeships, of course, we need to make sure that we have the workforce of the future, not just for the jobs, trained for the jobs that we have now, but in 30 years, right, when things are going to be different. So whatever that is, whether it's in the tech industry or manufacturing or, or whatever, um, the governor has proposed giving us three more people in our apprenticeship division. We're working very closely with her and her Future Ready Oregon program so that we can have CT career technical education be a pipeline into apprenticeships for jobs that 
pay good family wages and, and again, attract businesses to come here because, you know, I want Oregon to have the strongest workforce in the country. Well, talking about wages, there is some concern about wage theft that's in right. Oregon. That's the failure to pay workers the wages that right. they're owed. How much of a problem is that in the state? You know, it's a bigger problem than it should be. And unfortunately, the people that experience wage theft are the ones that are least uh, able to speak up. So, you know, I, I worked in a job, in, in, a, in a minimum wage job, and I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to get paid everything, but if I said something, I would get fired and then wouldn't be able to pay my rent. And, and so I, I, I come at this not from a theoretical perspective, but we have people here in Oregon whose wages are stolen, and um, that is one of the key things that Boley does is make sure that they can get those wages back and, and that the employers who steal those wages, and they are stealing, are held accountable. I want to touch on, before we run out of time, uh, something that was sort of life-changing for you that happened on right. Thanksgiving Day. Right. You were involved in a car crash on Thanksgiving Day. And from the photo, you look here, you posted this on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, it was a bad crash. I mean, it this was. looks like it was really scary. Um, yep. No one was seriously hurt in this? Um, you know, I had, my, my daughter was in the back seat. Uh, I had a friend from Boston that was there. And um, we were uh, driving and another car lost control and hit us head on. Um, so I spent, uh, I, I was very grateful that, um, you know, that we had airbags and, and that, uh, that the safety measure, you know, that I was in a safe car. Um, but I spent the next four weeks uh, not leaving my house on my couch, but I was grateful to be able to have access to healthcare. I was grateful that nobody was more seriously hurt. And um, I, I felt very lucky that I had the opportunity to be able to not go to work and be able to take care of myself. Um, so it, it was, it made me very, very grateful for my family, for my health, and what could have been so much worse. The other car, the people in the other car, they were all right as well. To stop you there, I'm so glad that you were all all right. Thank you for joining us thank here you. on Straight Talk, and thank you for watching. Please join us next week when my guest is Oregon Senator Ron Wyden. Have a great week.